India is EU's third largest trading partner and uh, both the, both the sides have been engaging in free trade agreement negotiations also. Uh, to talk more about India-EU trade partnership and how the way forward is, we are joined by EU Trade Commissioner uh, in Delhi, Mr. Uh, uh, Dabovskis. And uh, to begin with, uh, uh, ever since this uh, trade negotiation has been launched, relaunched, I think, two years ago, uh, what is uh, the, the status right now? Uh, where is it, it is stuck or how far have we uh, you know, reached in this whole negotiation process? Uh, well, uh, uh, indeed, uh, EU and India are uh, strategic partners and we are uh, developing uh, this partnership of, across different uh, range of areas, including in uh, trade. And uh, we relaunched our negotiations on free trade agreement, but we also launched negotiations on uh, investment protection agreement and on protection of geographical uh, indications. Uh, on free trade agreement, negotiations are ongoing very intensively. We already had uh, five rounds of uh, uh, negotiations. Uh, and uh, uh, we are uh, making progress on a number of areas, but there are still also a lot of uh, outstanding areas where further work is uh, needed. Uh, actually, uh, later this week, I'm going to have also a high-level economic uh, dialogue with uh, uh, Minister Piyush Goyal, where we'll be discussing those uh, topics uh, in uh, more uh, detail, how to make uh, further uh, progress. In any case, from the EU side, we uh, aim uh, for a deep and comprehensive uh, uh, free trade agreement uh, uh, covering broad range of uh, areas outside just uh, traditional uh, tar tariff liberalization discussions. Uh, if you could throw some light on the, the market access and uh, import duty, that remains to uh, you know biggest uh, point of contention right now. Uh, so how are you going to, what are the sectors where uh, it is, the, the whole process of negotiation is, is still stuck? What, what are the India's, uh, India's concern uh, and how are you trying to address those things? Uh, well, uh, I would say the uh, purpose of any free trade agreement is actually uh, uh, improving market access, reduction of uh, tariffs. So there is a shared understanding from both uh, sides on this. Well, uh, I cannot now uh, discuss, you know, uh, specific uh, sectors or uh, lines as it's still a work in progress. But I also would emphasize that uh, we are looking also on uh, other areas in the context of free trade agreement, like access to public uh, procurement, uh, uh, questions related to trade and sustainable development. So there is uh, uh, more than just uh, a question of uh, reducing tariffs. Uh, we are uh, hearing a lot about this global economic disorder or in instability, especially in the last three, four years of COVID pandemic. This term has been used very uh, prolifically that uh, the supply chain disruption has caused economies around the world to, to have concern and to think about new paradigm shift. Uh, how do you think India and EU can work together and what are the areas of cooperation where the two sides can work together to have a more stable global uh, you know, economic order? Uh, well, uh, indeed, uh, we uh, see that uh, uh, first in the context of uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, we so many uh, supply chain disruptions, uh, but also in a current more uh, uh, conflictual uh, geo uh, geopolitical uh, environment, uh, also in the context of Russia's aggression against uh, uh, Ukraine. So, uh, indeed, there is this paradigm uh, sh uh, shift, so to say, from uh, efficiency-based uh, uh, approach to resilience-based approach. And, uh, indeed, there is lots of work going on uh, strengthening the resilience of supply uh, chains, addressing strategic uh, dependencies. Uh, uh, this is uh, one of the topics we are discussing, for example, in EU-India Trade and Technology Council, uh, but uh, this uh, topic features prominently also at uh, G7 and G20 discussions, and so it's going to be discussed also this week in the G20 Trade Minister's meeting. Okay. Uh, when, when you are discussing about this economic stability and in the world order, uh, also China has emerged as one of the major economic power. Uh, it has investment across the world in, in various sectors and uh, in the last three, four years when we talk about this resilience and supply chain uh, disruption, the, the, the scope of China uh, has also been a worry. Uh, how do you see China's role uh, in terms of economic stability in the current world order and how do you, India, uh, how do you see India and EU can you know, cooperate or counter that uh, effect of Chinese economy or Chinese hegemony? if we can so say, in, in the world order? Uh, well, uh, first of all, it's uh, uh, clear that uh, everyone is better if we uphold uh, international rules-based international uh, order, including in area of uh, trade. Uh, 
uh, and uh, we know that uh, China has benefited enormously for its uh, membership in the World Trade uh, Organization. So it's also uh, uh, China's responsibility to ensure that uh, World Trade Organization can continue to function uh, successfully. So we are uh, engaging on discussions on uh, WTO uh, uh, reform, how to ensure that international rules-based order can be uh, uh, upheld. Uh, we know that there are uh, other challenges uh, to this. I was mentioning uh, uh, Russia's aggression against uh, uh, Ukraine. So there are uh, lots of issues which uh, need to be uh, dealt to address uh, uh, this uh, resilience of supply chains and uh, disruptions which we are facing. Uh, so when you talk about this resilience of supply chain, we are also talking about India emerging as, an, uh, as a destination where the manufacturing hub can be uh, created, uh, which has so far been uh, very much centered and uh, you know concentrated in China. Uh, how do you see, as as a European uh, you know, trade commissioner, that India's scope uh, and India's uh, scale and India's potential as a uh, upcoming major manufacturing hub for uh, European countries? Uh, well, uh, certainly there is uh, lots of untapped uh, potential uh, in uh, EU-India uh, uh, economic uh, relations. Uh, well, uh, our trade is uh, growing uh, rapidly, uh, also investment flows are uh, increasing quite uh, substantially, but still, uh, if you even uh, use this uh, comparison with uh, China, there is much more potential which we can do with uh, uh, India. Uh, what is obviously uh, important for this is to ensure a stable economic uh, environment, for example, to attract uh, more European investment. It's important to have investment protection agreement in place, which we are currently uh, negotiating, to emerge as manufacturing cab, for example, for exports to the EU. Uh, it's uh, important to remove uh, tariff barriers. Uh, for example, in uh, uh, ASEAN region, uh, we had seen that uh, once uh, uh, Vietnam was uh, concluding free trade agreement with the uh, EU, uh, it gave them really a competitive advantage to emerge as such kind of manufacturing hub uh, also for exports to the EU. So uh, India has uh, a potential to do uh, uh, the same and given the size of its uh, economy actually potential to do more. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, when, we start, when we talk about uh, this India-EU cooperation, uh, any uh, sector specific uh, area that you are looking at uh, having more collaboration in terms of you know, stability and uh, you know, shifting manufacturing base uh, in India because uh, I, I think recent Indian government has announced a lot of incentives for electronic manufacturing or uh, manufacturing in other areas as well. Uh, well, uh, uh, indeed, uh, we are uh, looking in uh, those uh, different uh, areas. Those uh, discussions is, are also taking in the context of uh, Trade and Technology uh, Council, which we have with uh, India. Uh, also, we are uh, looking at cooperation in uh, area of green energy and uh, hydrogen. It's a uh, uh, recent, uh, uh, recent initiatives. Uh, as I said, there's lots of uh, mm -hmm. potential, so it's in, in, important we intensify our cooperation, we intensify our negotiations. Uh, reach agreements and then use this potential. Uh, so uh, I, I also like to ask about this uh, whole China dynamics when we talk about in international uh, geopolitics and geoeconomics. There is uh, this term that has been recently coined that uh, you want to de-risk uh, with the with Chinese economy, but you don't want to decouple because of obvious reason uh, it has a long history of investment in European. So how, how do we balance that uh, to have no risk coming from that uh, the same country and uh, engaging with the same country where you, you think that there can be potential danger in global supply chain disruption uh, sort of things? Uh, well, uh, uh, indeed, uh, we are using this uh, term uh, uh, de-risking uh, and that brings us back to the discussion on mm -hmm. resilience of the supply chains. Uh, obviously, we have a very uh, complex relationship with uh, China. So in uh, EU, uh, we are saying that uh, China is in some sectors our cooperation partner like, uh, for example, if we want to, to fight uh, climate change, obviously we need mm. to uh, cooperate with China, which is the biggest emitter. Uh, China is at the same time economic competitor, and also China is a systemic uh, rival as it's uh, promoting different socioeconomic system. So we need to uh, navigate this very complex uh, uh, relationship. Uh, we, of course, need to take into account the fact that China is the second biggest uh, uh, economy in the world. It's also the second biggest uh, trading partner for the uh, EU. So, uh, 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 therefore, uh, we uh, see areas of cooperation where we can uh, 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 find those areas of cooperation and where, uh, uh, where uh, we risk where we see some uh, strategic dependencies. Of course, and uh, talking about this whole uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict that has happened in the last one and a half year or so, uh, you have been mentioning about this, uh, how it has damaged or how it has disrupted the world uh, economic order. Uh, 
there has been continuous uh, sanction that has been put against Russia. Uh, how much of uh, impact do you think it has uh, created uh, in Russia's ability to continue with this war uh, in Ukraine? Uh, well, uh, indeed, uh, uh, from the EU and many other countries, we have put uh, unprecedented sanctions against Russia. In EU, we have put forward uh, 11 sanctions uh, packages to uh, reduce uh, Russia's ability to wage uh, the war, so reduce the ability to finance the war, and also technological uh, possibilities, uh, talking about uh, high-tech and dual-use uh, items uh, uh, reaching uh, uh, Russia. We see that those sanctions are having impact. If you look, for example, at the last year, uh, last year was uh, marked by record high energy prices. And for uh, Russia as a major uh, energy exporter, it should have been a good year for Russia's economy. Instead, Russia's economy was uh, in a uh, recession. Uh, uh, this year, uh, well, there are different forecasts on the economy and also the economic data which is now coming from uh, Russia is not uh, reliable, uh, but we see uh, problems in many manufacturing uh, sectors. We see uh, rapidly uh, depreciate, uh, depreciating uh, uh, ruble, so we see that sanctions are having an impact. So what is important now is uh, to stay the course to uh, keep uh, providing all necessary uh, uh, support to Ukraine so that it can uh, 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 fight against uh, Russia, it can uh, defend its uh, sovereignty and territorial uh, integrity, and it can eventually uh, win this war, and to keep uh, pressure on aggressor Russia. Uh, so, so we're talking about the Russia same, uh, another way, if you have been putting sanction against Russia, Russia have been finding ways to uh, you know sell its product and commodities in the international market recent uh, months uh, india has also emerged as one of the key uh, importer of russian crude in fact russia has become the largest crude supplier to india right now uh, china has also been importing russian crude uh, like way more than it used to be uh, so i i, I think uh, how, how much to, will you say that russia has been able to circumvent uh, through the sanctions regime that the eu and uh, its partner countries are trying to put against russia uh, to to stop having enough revenue or enough resources to fund its war? Uh, well, uh, uh, indeed, uh, uh, sanctions would have been more uh, effective if more countries were uh, uh, joining this. We know that there are uh, obviously a number of uh, important countries which are not uh, uh, joining the uh, sanctions, but we are in dialogue also uh, with uh, uh, those uh, countries to uh, uh, exactly avoid uh, sanctions and conventions and uh, other effects. Uh, there is also, uh, if we talk uh, the, about the revenue sources, the main uh, revenue source for Russia's budget is sale of uh, uh, oil. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, there uh, we see also the effects of um, so-called G7 plus price cap, which has been introduced on uh, uh, price of exports of Russian oil. Have you had any conversation with the Indian uh, partners on the issue of uh, how these sanctions can be more, uh, you know, stronger? Uh, if India would cooperate with the EU sanctions against Russia? Uh, well, uh, obviously we have those discussions with, uh, uh, as I said, uh, 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 different uh, players around uh, the world, and obviously we have been raising it also in our uh, bilateral uh, discussions with India. Okay. Uh, talking about this environmental issues, uh, green hydrogen, uh, like you mentioned, has also emerged as one of the major part of uh, you know upcoming research and development projects. Uh, how much of cooperation has been going on between European Union and India on the issue of uh, uh, energy transition and finding new avenues of uh, you know, energy resources in terms of uh, green energy. Well, uh, as I was mentioning, indeed, uh, uh, EU uh, uh, India has developed partnership on uh, green energy and uh, hydrogen. Uh, so, uh, uh, including uh, 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 EU is uh, providing uh, financing for this. For example, European Investment Bank uh, has announced a 1 billion euros uh, financing program for uh, development of uh, focusing exactly on green uh, hydrogen. Uh, uh, clearly, uh, uh, India is now the most populous country in the uh, world, has important role to play in a global fight against uh, climate change and addressing uh, other uh, environmental issues. So we are interested to uh, 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 cooperate, and green energy is important part of this cooperation. Uh, one complaint has always been from the side of developing countries that the enough of resources and the techn technical expertise that the European countries or the developed, con developed countries have, uh, they are not willing to share it more uh, you know, openly with the developing world. Uh, how much? Uh, uh, what's your opinion on that? Uh, 
Uh, well, uh, actually, we are uh, willing to promote uh, green uh, technologies uh, and, uh, well, not only in the area of uh, energy, but the green tech uh, more uh, general. Uh, I was mentioning several times our uh, um, Trade and Technology Council. Um, uh, exactly, the green technologies is also one of the areas which we are discussing how we can cooperate uh, more uh, on this. Uh, I was also mentioning the importance of uh, conducive business uh, uh, environment and investment protection agreements so that investors which are doing those uh, 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 investments, especially in uh, new cutting uh, technologies, uh, can be assured that their investments are actually uh, uh, protected and that it benefits both uh, uh, the country in uh, question and that it uh, uh, benefits also investors. Uh, before we end our discussion, my final question will be uh, how far are we before uh, India and you can finalize uh, their free trade agreement? Uh, could we see uh, that like in, in this year only uh, this, this thing can happen? Uh, well, uh, we normally uh, try to uh, avoid too much focus on fixed uh, deadlines. As mm -hmm. we are saying, it's uh, uh, substance over uh, deadlines. So we need to make uh, progress on substance. And once we have progress on substance, we can uh, uh, conclude in a new course. Uh, thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you.